Now there is a small detail contained within the scriptures later on when Jacob dies, when Joseph dies, there is this prescription of Egyptian mourning and a time period that's very specific. And it turns out this is the ancient recipe for mummification. You and I are going to take a look at this right now. Patriarchs that were mummified. There are two men in the Bible said to have been mummified or embalmed in Egypt, Jacob, known as Israel, and Joseph, his son. Genesis 50 even gives the timeline of the mummification process, 40 days for embalming plus 30 days for mourning, giving a total of 70 days, the exact number verified by ancient sources. There were a few different ways to embalm in ancient Egypt, but since Joseph was the Pharaoh's vizier, his second in command, it's safe to assume the most expensive route was taken, which is also the most well-known process. To preserve the human body after death, the brain was removed from the skull through a nostril, and the skull was rinsed out with a water-herb mixture. Next, the internal organs were removed by a cut made in the abdomen. The lungs, stomach, intestines, and liver were saved to be buried in their own jars. The body was then washed out with a special wine followed by a potent spice rinse. After cleansing, the cavity would be packed with a combination of ground spices, closed up, and the whole body would be buried in natron, a salty mineral to remove all moisture. After 40 days in the natron, the mummy was removed, cleansed, and wrapped in linen decorated with golden jewels and covered in a glue-like substance called bitumen. The remains would then be returned to the family who had since made a person-shaped decorated wooden coffin and the mourning rituals would continue. For the ancient Egyptians, mummification was essential to their beliefs in the afterlife. For Bible students, it's an intriguing prospect that Jacob and Joseph's mummies could still be encased in Abraham's cave of Machpelah.